morning, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Happy Friday for those that are tuning in now. Just got word that Facebook Live isn't working yet. So this is just us on Zoom today, and hopefully we'll get this back. Um, we'll get you the Facebook feed during the day. Big today, to, big day today, lots going on in the world. I've got a lot to talk to you guys about. I feel like every time something happens during my day now, I'm like looking forward to talking to you guys about it in the morning. We are celebrating a bar mitzvah of our, our son this weekend. So I wanted to share that all with you. Words are very powerful in Judaism. So if you have a minute today, just take a second and give my son a blessing from your mouth to God's ears that he should live a happy life and a successful life and a, a good life and whatever comes to your heart. I know that God's listening to your words. And we have a lot to talk about. I mean, we, we've been talking about vision for a very long time. And if there's one thing that is real life vision versus real, right? What's there versus what's here. If that ever, if that ever manifested, it's the vision of a young boy who has, since he was, I don't know, nine, 10, been looking forward to a certain type of bar mitzvah. And then all of a sudden it's totally different. It's fascinating and I'm still processing. So I hope that by Monday we'll talk about it. Sunday we won't, won't be having a show. It'll be his Zoom party. Um, and then maybe we'll be back. We'll, and then we'll be back with God's help again on Monday. So yesterday we started talking about this idea of, of the crossover. The crossover is one of the most important features in our ability to do multiple things in life. We, we've got a lot going on. We've got a lot, we've got a lot of things that we have to do every single day and they become almost impossible to manage. And so what we do is we just let them flood into our minds. There's this technique that they use in different areas. I've seen this used in, in Judaism for sure. I've seen this used in more of like Eastern philosophy in which they have you like stare at something for a brief period of time and focus your attention on just that thing. It seems almost wasteful that like you look at a flower and you have to meditate on the flower. Judaism is a practice like this where you look at a name of God, big rabbis, Kabbalists, they look at a certain name of God and they meditate on it. And the reason why they do that there's spiritual reasons, but at least mentally why I do that is because what they're doing is they're training their brain to be all in. If, you're, if you can't control the gates of your own mind, if it's open for anybody to walk in, if your mind is an open street, then any car that just drives by, drives by. You know that feeling you get? Where like you're somewhere and then like a thought comes by? So it's one thing if some random thought comes in, because really thoughts don't come from us. They come from our subconscious. They come from wherever. There's a whole analysis and research as to where do these random thoughts come from. They come from sort of uh, neuroplasticity, right? If every time you have a thought, it creates a connection. So if you were in camp and you were a kid and they played this one song again and again and again and again, and you're 20 years later when you hear the song, there's a neurological connection between the place you were in and that song. And so all of a sudden, like the thought pops in. So I'm not talking about like a random thought. I'm talking about when you deliberate on something. I'm talking about where you, when you're doing something and then something else pops in, then you live in that space and you live in that space. And then, oh my God, I got to take care of this thing. You live in that space. And where you really have no control over the things that your brain will say, let's log into this now. You, it's like almost as if like our brains are like computers. Now it's different because the computing power is big. But for those of you who remember like 10 years ago, when like it, even like 15 years ago, when like, you know, the computing power of every one of our personal computers wasn't strong enough. You remember like when you would have like too many page, web pages open and like the whole thing just freezes? And like, you're like, control, alt, delete. Remember control, alt, delete? Like, I, 
that control alt delete was restart for those that, who don't remember that i don't know like 10 years ago 15 years ago so what would happen is as laptops were making it back and i'm sorry if you're listening to this and you're like how old is charlie like it's not i'm not that old this this is relatively new believe it or not this is a relatively in the, in the span of history computers are relatively new and i i remember the I was I was in college. I was in law school when when laptops were really really making it. In the beginning, you didn't have that much computing power, so you would have like ten pages open at the same time, and your computer would just be like, "I'm done." You'd be typing, and your computer would be like, "Yeah, I'm done." I said, "I'm totally out." You you've maxed me, and you're like, "Well, I need you." And your laptop's like, "Yeah, well, you've got four million things going on right now. I can't handle it. Like, let's let's take a break." And you'd have to like control alt delete, and then it wouldn't work. So you'd have to like restart the whole computer. Many times, that, that's our lives. We've got so many web pages open in our brain. It's like, we got 50 things happening in every single second. And oh, I gotta go here and I gotta go here. And let me, let me leave this window open, that window open. And like, it's like nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. Even, even if you can't control it, we don't even try to control it. We don't even try to control it. My daughters, God bless them, have this thing where they, now my house is also a school. So, um, you know, in the morning, it's, it's, it's a synagogue, right? Like, it's, it's like everything, you know, thank God. Like, it's classrooms at nine, you know, prayers are at eight. So, like, I have my corner. And, like, at some point, like, some of my kids are younger and not interested. And it's, they're rocking and wrestling. And then I've got my girls who are, like, trying to pray in the morning. And at some point, I look around, I can't find them. And they left. They, in my, they went to my backyard. Each one took, like, a spot. And every day, they pray in the backyard. I'm like, where'd you go? They're like, we just can't. Like, we just can't. Like, it's, it's just impossible. So even in the chaos, we have to look for ways to find pockets of, of, of clarity and peace. But we don't. We don't enough. And so the web pages are all open. And when the web pages are all open and our minds can drift in any which way, the muscle of mental attention is, is weakened. We don't appreciate that the mind is a muscle. We think the mind is like a soul. Like it's a dynamic enigma that, that I can't control. We, it's not. It's, the, it's big. It's the most powerful supercomputer in the history of the world. I'm not saying it's the same complexity as your abs. But it's still a muscle. It's hardware. It's not software. You are the essential self, is your software. It's your the energy. Your brain is a muscle that is going to react to the world, to who the real you wants. Which means that we have to recognize that the brain is a muscle. And we have to learn how to control the muscle. And with practice, we can extend the muscle. We spoke a few, I don't know when this was, maybe a week, although Andy, I'm sure, knows. We spoke maybe a week ago about the idea of ego depletion and willpower. At some point, we'll catalog some of these talks. This way people can find it. And if they're interested and ego depletion is that our brain has a limited amount of willpower. Well, you can stretch that. If you can't stretch it infinitely, you can stretch it. You can work it. You can maneuver it just like you can stretch your ability to run a marathon or do push-ups. It's harder. The brain is harder than your, your ability to run, but it's still, it's still malleable. That's part of the, the excitement of life is that you can change your brain. But the one muscle that we don't appreciate is the muscle of concentration. It's the muscle of being able to tell the thoughts as they come in. I'm not focusing on you right now. And let me be clear. I don't mean that you, it's not going to come into your brain, that thought. I mean that when it comes into your brain, the ability to not delve in it. You cannot control random thoughts. Those are not in our world. 
and we can delve into that later on in different shows. Random thoughts. Forget it. Don't even like, we're not even getting there. It's when we get the random thought, how much time do we spend emotionally in it? Do we know enough? Do we, do we appreciate ourselves enough to know, okay, I got it. I'll deal with you in a half an hour. I'll deal with you in, in three hours from now. I'm doing this now. And this comes because we don't train ourselves to be all in. This is the crossover talk of yesterday. We don't trust ourselves that if I can go all into this conversation, I can on a dime switch over and be all into the next thing. We don't have that confidence that I'll be able to make this up in five minutes from now. There's even a little part of us that thinks like, if I don't do it now, then something big is going to happen. We over-exaggerate things in front of us. This is a major sort of mental trap. Our brains are designed to navigate us through life, which is why they're survival. That's why you have to fight for vision because vision isn't natural. To some people, they live in the clouds. But even when they live in the clouds, they don't really live in the, in the clouds that are far enough. We live in the weeds. We have to because our brains are built to survive. We need to opt into greatness. Greatness is a choice. It's 2.0. It's our free will that makes us great. The gift that God gave us is a brain that can get you to survive. Survival is here. Survival is the weeds. Survival exaggerates that which is in front of you because all that does is keep you safe. Like I said earlier in the show, that's why if you've ever read a book or seen a movie and the person in each of those things or, or in either of those things dies, you, you may cry. If you've ever seen a movie of someone who dies, you may be in tears. Now, you know that person got an Oscar for dying. That person made $50 million on that movie because they die so well that we cry from it. You know the person living in some mansion in Beverly Hills on his fifth wife because he's such a great, he has this much money because he's such a great, and he's so full of himself that he dies so well that it gets to his head and he can't have a relationship. And yet, when you see him on a screen, 10 years after the film, you're crying. How come? It's because the brain gets into something. It's hard to get out of it. And for the moments that you're in that movie, that book, that story, that show, your brain's not like, wait a second, this isn't real. The, the characters are real. People have a, there's a whole, I took this class in college. I took a class on, I, I forgot the title of it. It was so cool. I, I, I majored in, uh, the pre-law major was um, poli-sci and communications. And part of the, the department was media studies. And I took a class in the psychological impact of, of media. And they had these studies of people that saw characters out of character. And they had like, they couldn't even like, like he's George Costanza. Like, I don't understand what, what else could he possibly be? And they had all these studies of actors who were amazing actors who had no ability to transition to different parts of their career because someone would watch like a movie of the actor and be like, what's Jerry Seinfeld doing in that movie? Like, why isn't he back in his house with Kramer and George? So this idea that we're in the weeds so much you could not know a teen even existed in college basketball. And then mid-March Madness, you're screaming at the screen for the foul call because you picked them on your, on, your, on your bracket. Understand, though, that that's a great thing when you want to get to someplace. And we got to use it for our rituals. But that exaggerates things. It's dramatic when you get a phone call from your friend and it's like, she said, what? And then now it's drama and it's emotion and you're in it and it's sucking up your day and you were focused on something and then you keep on being pulled back to that thing that really at the end of the day is an exaggerated thing that won't matter. So much 
of what we do really is the exaggeration of what's core. This is, we're getting this lesson every second of our days now. So much of what we are involved in is the exaggeration of how what we need to be involved in because we run all the time. And when we allow ourselves to never discern between that which is critically important and that which is just urgent or feels important, we're, we're always being pulled. This is a great piece that I read years ago from one of the great authors, Steve Covey. He wrote a book called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And in there, he has this four quadrant box. Maybe I'll send this out to someone. We got to figure out a way to have some kind of chat together, but we'll figure this out. Where he has in the box, like urgent, not important, urgent, important, not urgent, important, and not urgent, not important. And he basically shows if you look at your life, much of what we're really doing is having our brains be dragged into things that are urgent, but not important. Whereas if you put yourself and think through things that are urgent and important or non-urgent but important if you can discern between the two you give yourself permission to tell the things that are not important i got you you put up a gate it's, it's, a, it's such a big deal just to even try this practically try this over the weekend try to do anything over the weekend try to sit with a book try to sit with some prayer try to sit and 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 do your vision Try to sit with a family member and have a conversation. Just try to do something all in and then watch your brain go, but we got it, but we got it, but we got it, but we got it. Did you, did you, did you, do? And just before you react, just be visible to your thoughts. Try, I'm telling you, it's going to like blow it up. Just be visible. Go, oh, do I have to do that? Read a book. Just so you don't, person in front of you doesn't think like you're insane. Read a book and then or write a vision or do something which requires the mind and then watch the stuff happen. Mommy, can you do this? Mommy, can you do this? Daddy can, do and just watch. And before you do it, don't do it. Just slow it down and go, do I have to do this right this second? Can I just suck up some energy in my brain and focus more on what the task at hand is? Can I build up the muscle of concentration? Can I start to put the first brick down in the gates that will be the gates that protect the most valuable resource I have, which is my brain, my mind, my brain, my mind. We're protecting jewelry. We're protecting things of value to us. There's nothing more valuable that we have in our lives, but our soul. But there's nothing more valuable that we have here than our minds. Are we protecting our minds? Do we have a gate up around our minds so the right stuff comes in and the wrong stuff doesn't even come in? If we don't build a muscle around our, 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 our brains, our minds, how do we ever expect to go all in on something? Oh, because I have to, because I have, I forgot to, I forgot to, I forgot to. You know what that is? When you say I forgot to, you know what you're saying to yourself is, if I don't do it now, I'm never going to remember. Really, why? Because when it happens, we don't have an ability to, to record it. That means our whole lives is just like reacting to things that pop into our minds. Once we appreciate that concentration is a value into itself, it's a muscle into itself. And we start to work the muscle. That's why going all in is so critical. That's why the crossover is so important. That's why it's the same. That's why it's the hardest move as per my coach that I met on the, on the, on the plane last, yesterday. I met him a while ago. We spoke with him yesterday. It's because players don't do this because they're scared. What if I go right? I can't go left. I really want to go left, but I, I, if I go right, I'm not going left. I want to get to be left already. I want to go left already. I don't want to wait. I don't want to really fake because I want to be there already. It's our lives. But I got to do so much. But I got to do so much. I got so much to do today. I got so much to do today. But if I don't, but if I don't, but if I don't, but if I don't, I got to respond to the thing right away. He just emailed me. He just texted me. He just e Someone once said to me once, I'll never forget this. It was a close friend of mine. I was working really hard on a deal once. I was running some project and I took my family. We were, we were blessed to go to, pay, to a Passover program and we land there and I'm calling into the office and he picks up the phone after a conference and goes, what are you doing? 
I'm like, now we got to take this. He goes, aren't you on vacation with your family? I'm like, yeah, but this has to happen. This has to happen. This has to happen. And I'll never forget him. He looks at me and goes, are you an ER doctor? I'm like, no. I'm, I'm, at that point, I wasn't. I'm like in real estate. So he says, yeah. Look at the things in front of you. Give a, Really, look at it. Will this be here in a couple of days? I'm like, yeah. He's like, yeah. Go focus on what's important. If you, back then we had beepers. Because if your beeper buzzes and you're a doctor, pick it up. Or whatever else is, whatever you are that is related to someone's emergency. If you're just picking up emails to see who's emailing you or you're just doing things because like they're in your head, well, get it together. You're with your family now. Go be with your family. This will be here when you get back. He was right. It was. It always is. This is our goal for the weekend. Our goal for this weekend is let's start to build that muscle of all in. Try it once. Let me know how you do. Try it. Sit down and do something that requires concentration. Watch the world distract you. And just pause. Don't do it. Just pause and see it. Start building the muscles of concentration. All right. Hope everybody is well. Looking forward to sharing. So we're off on Sunday. And I look forward to uh, sharing with all of you um, the report of the Bar Mitzvah uh, on Monday with God's help. Pray for us. Bless us. Put us in your prayers. Put us in your hearts. Because your words are really powerful. I know God listens to the words that come out of your mouth. Shabbat shalom to everybody. Have a great weekend. Looking forward to seeing you Monday.